We are delighted to be joined by the awesome YouTuber and podcaster, the host of Tulips and Honey, Lauren Hereford. Hello and welcome to Expositive Word, Lauren. Hi, brother. I am so thankful and just incredibly honored to be here. Very humbled that you even asked me. Thank- and thank you for that that uh, introduction. That was really, really great. <laughs> like that we, we peaked. That's as good as this, this is going to be, Lauren. <laughs> 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 Lauren, in England, we would call your, we would actually say Lauren Hereford, but you're, you're, you've got a much posher angle with this. It's Lauren Hereford, right? <laughs> it is, and and I'm glad that you think it's posh because it's actually uh, the name of a of a cow that's <laughs> bred here in America. So there's, there's the Hereford cow. Wow. We frequently see it being being sold at the uh, supermarkets, the, yeah. the Hereford steak, and and so yeah, it's. Uh, it's always how I pronounce it when people say, how do you say your last name? <laughs> Herford, like the cow. That That's a sad way to do it. but it's <laughs> It gets me. Yeah, well, brilliant. Lauren, do you see yourself as more of a YouTuber or a podcaster? Oh, okay. So I, I would definitely say a podcaster. Yeah. I, I'm glad I have the platform of, of working with YouTube because I know there's a lot of people out there that actually don't know what a podcast is. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the podcasting side of it is actually where I started from, and, and we've got you know a whole channel where there's other podcasters actually that that you know do their podcasts throughout the week. So mm. I would probably say podcaster more so than YouTube. If somebody was holding a gun to my head and they were like choose, I would I would I would pick podcasting. Although YouTube is is uh, easier for the monetizing side, it's actually a lot more work. Yeah. Or like just in general. Yeah, I, I absolutely hope that never happens, Lauren. I hope nobody ever points a gun at your head <laughs> and makes you choose. <laughs> that would be so Me bad. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get stuck into the questions, tell us a little bit about yourself, Lauren. Okay, yeah, sure. So um, I am a mom and a, a wife. I, I homeschool my daughter. We have one child, uh, Kaylee. She's nine. She's mm-hmm. going to be 10 in um less than two weeks so that's uh, sad and, and hard to deal with but yeah, yeah um i was born and raised in dallas texas and we travel for my husband's work now so i've kind of gotten to see a little bit of of the country just here in america mm. and um i i became a believer in 2015 so that's that's pretty much me in a nutshell so how did you become a christian so uh, I actually was in church for over a decade before I actually I heard the genuine gospel yeah. preached. I was in a prayer group, uh, ironically, on Facebook, and this, this street preacher from from Texas, I think Houston or Austin, I can't remember now because my memory is just terrible, <laughs> but he sent me a Paul Washer sermon, and I had never heard anything like that before. Yeah, yeah. And so um, my husband had already been questioning, we were in the Word of Faith, and he had been questioning pretty much everything at that point, and I didn't question things. I was just sort of trying to earn my way to heaven, so I was getting along to get along, and, and he was questioning everything, which made me really nervous. So so here this brother uh, sends me a, a Paul Washer sermon, and I watch it, and I'm like, okay, this is what my husband's looking for. This is, this yeah. is all the answers that he's looking for. <laughs> and so... We're in this little hotel. Uh, we were on one of our earlier trips for traveling, and, and our apartment wasn't wasn't ready yet. And so the housing department that my husband works for, they put us in this little apartment, uh, a little hotel, sorry. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like 11 o'clock at night on July 4th. Everybody else is out celebrating um, Independence Day here in America. And my husband and I are sitting there watching Paul Washer videos. <laughs> yeah. And as I'm listening to it for the second time, that was the time that I actually applied it to myself. And I just realized I'm in trouble because um, I, I'm an idolater and I'm prideful and I'm sinful and I'm going through like the list of my mind of mm-hmm. like, there's just there's no way I'm going to be uh, saved. There's no reason why God would save someone that was as wretched as me. It was the first time I had ever seen myself in the mirror of the law. And, and I just sort of looked over at my husband and I said, I don't think I'm saved. And, and he looked up at me and he said, oh, I know I'm not. And so I went to the bathroom and uh, that was the only little place of sort of privacy and just just cried out to god you know i don't deserve it but if you if you would save me i would appreciate wow. that yeah. um and repented of my sins but went to bed with the with the thought in the back of my mind that there's no way that someone as horrible as me would ever get into heaven and and of course god is gracious so i woke up the next morning with all things just being completely new my desires were new my um my instinct my natural response was i have to get I have to go, get to God's word because I don't understand mm. who he is or why he mm. would save me. I just knew that everything was different. So mm. 
the uh, desire to fellowship, the desire for prayer, for God's word was there and, and steadily grew from there. And of course, repentance and faith were, were graciously given. So yeah. from that point, July 4th, 2015, I was uh, made a new person and and God has been gracious with me since then. Wow, that's so amazing. So you'd been going to church for 10 years prior to that day, right? Yes, sir. So what, what kind of things was you hearing on a Sunday? What was your, what was a typical kind of sermon like if you if you hadn't, hadn't been listening to the gospel? <laughs> well, usually, uh, because it was the Word of Faith uh, movement that I was in, it was mm. a lot of uh, your ability to speak things into existence. So you would hear each Sunday the pastor would give sort of a personal story of something that happened to him that week, something that, that encouraged him or something that he went through, something that he did. And then he would take a, a verse, typically one of the verses that we hear pretty often. Um, yeah. He was, you know, wounded for our transgressions. He'll, you know, he'll heal all of your, your wounds and things like that. And, and so it would be a twisting of some sort of scripture like that. And then a lot of personal stories and then sort of the, and this is a weird thing that I think a lot of people, if you haven't been in the Word of Faith, that you don't realize that the amount of guilt that's placed on you is a tremendous amount. Because at some point in the sermon, every Sunday and every Wednesday, you're going to hear that if you're sick or if you're if you're depressed or if you're discouraged or somebody that you know is, is unhappy, if you're not rich, if you're not prospering, that you're wrong for something. Like there, there's something that you're doing that's sinful or you're just not having enough faith. And so you sort of spin your wheels all week long trying to figure yeah. out how to have more faith. Yeah. And and you ignore the whatever sickness is going on, if you've got the flu or whatever it is. Um, and so there's a lot of guilt that comes along with that. So that's pretty much your your Sunday where you're you, – you sort of get told this this lie that you can somehow achieve perfection and uh, health and wealth, and then you go through the rest of your week. And we were very poor uh, growing up. It was, I, I was raised by a single mom, so we were never wealthy and yeah. very rarely healthy. So yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of guilt in that. So that was pretty much every Sunday where we weren't being taught Scripture or uh, the Gospel or really anything biblical. It was very, um, especially in, in my time frame, so... Probably 20, 30 years ago, it would have been all about more like the the gifts and and you need to also be healing. But by the time I came into the Word of Faith, it had become very um, sort of people driven. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit of like your best life now mixed in with the Word of Faith stuff. So it's very confusing at the same time. Like you're hearing both sides and it was it was a confusing time for me for sure. Yeah. And unfortunately, Lauren, this isn't a, uh, a niche kind of um yeah. teaching this is the public face pretty much of western christianity right in in, in terms of right. the prosperity gospel w- what what is it about the prosperity gospel do you think that's made it so popular and how dangerous is it i think what makes it so popular is just that it's what we all want to hear we want to hear yeah. um that that there's a way to be wealthy that there's yeah. a way to be yeah healthy all the time i think it's um justin peters who frequently says that they're they're attacking the basics of humanity like your flesh wants those things so yeah. much already and yeah. so it's popular because that's that's the the flesh already wants to hear that and i think the reason it's so dangerous is because first of all people aren't hearing the gospel yeah. um they're they're hearing this nonsense that's unbiblical but then whenever it doesn't come true yeah and you you get sick or somebody you love gets cancer or even um like my my nephew he died when he was 1 years old mm-hmm. You see those things, and you say, "Why would a one-year-old die? Why, why, why did that happen? If we all had faith and we were all praying for him, yeah. it it actually pits people against true Christianity because they're being just like any other sort of cult. Uh, if you take a Jehovah's Witness out of that, they they tend to be the most aggressive against hearing the gospel mm. because they don't want to be duped again. And I think that's what makes it so dangerous is they're they're being told something that that's just it's eventually going to be shown to be false. Everybody is going to get sick." Our bodies are subject to entropy. We're, we're all going to eventually suffer from something, especially right now with COVID and this is happening all over the world. This was a, a great opportunity, I think, to share with people that, that the uh, prosperity gospel is nonsense because yeah. so many people were already concerned yeah. about getting sick. Yeah, so true. So this Paul Washer sermon that you, you heard for the first time, was it the Paul Washer sermon? <laughs> <laughs> I get asked that 
a lot. You know, it's really funny. I didn't even listen to that the the Paul Walker sermon until uh, a couple of years after the fact. But yeah. I'll never forget. And I can't find the exact uh, one because you know there's so many like sermon jams out there yeah. now. Yeah. It sort of muddied the water on YouTube where it's hard to find the exact one. But he was explaining the the pig scenario that he gives from time to time, where if you're if you're a pig and you are slopping down that nasty slop and all the the junk that comes in it, yeah, yeah. and somebody snaps their finger and turns you into a man and you're looking at that slop you're going to be disgusted you might even vomit out what you've already eaten because men don't we don't eat like a pig does yeah and he said if you're a christian i just described your conversion because that's what sin is it's it's disgusting it's vomit and i when i heard that i remember thinking um i've never looked at sin as if it was anything other than than pleasure for a season so that was that was that point where i realized i'm not a christian because i don't i didn't at that time see sin as anything other than just, you know, joy yeah. and pleasure. And yeah. so that, that was the, and I, I can't find the exact sermon because he actually says it in a few, in a few different sure. yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. It makes yeah. it harder to figure it out. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Amazing. So what has life looked like since becoming a Christian? And when did you decide that you wanted to create an online platform to help people? Well, I, um, well, so life as a, as a believer is completely different than life as a non-believer. Because yeah. I, I never had to think logically as a non-believer. I could just sort of go with the the illogical flow of, you know, prosperity gospel and everything. Mm. But mm. the moment I became a believer, um, well, first of all, the first year I spent pretty much just in tears the whole, the whole time I would yeah. have nightmares that my sin was still there and that I was still a false convert and, and that I uh, wasn't really, wasn't really genuinely saved. And then I would wake up and, and cry rejoicingly that, that dream was a nightmare and that wasn't true and that God really did genuinely mm. save me. And those dreams were recurring for the first year, but I also felt uh, for the first time the weight of other people and their salvation. Whereas before I never considered that it wasn't, it wasn't something that I had ever even thought about. So yeah. friends, family, and you sort of sit back and you think I just spent over a decade in church and no one taught me the gospel. Does that mean that none of the people that I know, know the gospel? And mm. so that, that weightiness um, hits you and you start wanting to share the gospel with everybody. I had a family member tell me that I needed to, I needed to maybe spend some time off, off of social media <laughs> because I thought I had gone nuts. Yeah. Um, but it, it did look a lot like a, a separation happens. You know, you, yeah. you, if you're in a false church like that, you sort of have this inevitable point where people, they, they have enough of listening to you tell them that what they're listening to is wrong yeah, yeah. and they just sort of separate from you, which is, which was really difficult uh, for that first year. But God really blessed me with uh, one of my, my high school friends that had been in the uh, word of faith with me the whole time. She actually at the same time was also being saved and learning about reformed theology. So that was kind of a, a weird thing where we both didn't realize it. And she came to me one day and was like, so don't be offended, but I think I'm a Calvinist. <laughs> I was like, you're kidding me. I'm a Calvinist. And we were, we were just like, we're both high-fiving. But um, <laughs> that's, that's sort of the, the way that it looked uh, since then. But I almost immediately wanted to use my time differently. Mm. So the platform started as a blog. And the reason I started with the blog was because I thought, if other people are as confused as I am by all these things, because you know, I'm having to like relearn everything biblical yeah. and sort of unlearn all the nonsense and oh there's so many words there's so many big big words that <laughs> yeah, people yeah, use yeah so i decided like maybe i can uh, start something where i'm writing all these things down and originally it was called biblical beginnings because i wanted to sort of start with the beginning of of being saved and, yeah. and walk through all the things that i was learning and so that way if somebody else was walking through that difficult situation they could walk with me or if later on they needed it they could they could join me so that's sort of why yeah. the uh the online platform started so can you still find biblical beginnings now is that still a, a, is that archived can you still find that stuff oh yeah it's all still there it's titled uh the the blog i just switched the name over to tulips and honey hub now but it's the same it's the same exact blog so it's all still there it's uh since 2017 i think was yeah. the original was the original post yeah so way good back. so good so how did you come up with the name change what happened there then lauren oh so tulips and honey was actually uh the idea that uh for a little while i had a co-host and when she joined me she let me know that my original podcast name which was afterthought yeah uh and and the point of that was just that i was i was creating a podcast 
to sort of give the afterthoughts of all of my blog articles that yeah. I couldn't expound upon because people don't want to read that much. So um, she was like, so you know there's actually already a podcast called Afterthoughts. <laughs> and I, I didn't know anything about what I was doing at yeah. the time, so I had no idea. And, and so we, we started praying together and talking over like what we could change the name to. And and the idea of tulips is just the actual tulips from, uh, you know, Calvinism, and it's my favorite flower. And yeah. then um, honey came derived from the uh, proverb that kind words, gracious words are uh, like a honeycomb to the soul. So that's sort of how we came up with the name Tulips and Honey. And then I added the little hub in whenever I uh, started inviting other people to podcast with us on the channel. So cool. Lauren, I am so pleased that I'm not the only person because when Exposit the Word first started, we was called Social Church. And I really? did, I did, yeah, I did exactly the same thing. I have in my wardrobe, I've got like maybe 10 t-shirts, hoodies, all with social <laughs> church on it. Um, we'd produced maybe six or 700 videos, all with the graphics of social church. And then one day I found out that somebody had trademarked the uh, the social church name. So I, I can't, I, I worry whenever I wear one of those social church t-shirts now, that I'm going to get sued walking down the street. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Wow. So, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so what have been some of the most exciting highlights for you so far? Oh, wow. I, I think the most exciting highlights for podcasting and, and YouTubing and all this stuff has just been getting to know all the people that are listening. And so there's a, a Facebook group that we have now where people who are fans of the show come and they, they can talk with one another. And it's really amazing to me to see these these people that are all in all in different time zones, right? So like, yeah. not time zones, that's probably the wrong word, but they're all, they've been saved for a different amount of time. So there's yeah. some in there that have been saved for longer than I've been alive and they're there and they answer questions for, for all of the newer people, like the newer believers and things. And to see them interact with one another and not just, uh, not just interacting with the show, but really like learning and growing together and sharing, sharing resources with each other and things of that nature has just been uh, tremendous for me. It's such a, it's a blessing to see. And just the the community that's that's surrounded there, it's, it's been probably the greatest highlight for me. And how can you find that? How can, I don't think anyone yeah. would ever listen. So. Yeah, yeah. So how, how can listeners join that group then, Lauren? <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, you can find it on Facebook. It's the Tulips and Honey Hub group. So there's a Tulips and Honey Hub page, and that's going to have a blue logo. And yeah. then there's the Tulips and Honey and Hub uh, Honey Hub group. And it'll have sort of a salmon pink. Um, and then you have to answer a few questions, um, like whether or not you, you'll – all the rules and yeah. you're whether or not you believe in the doctrines of grace and then of course whether or not you like pineapple on pizza so the answer <laughs> to that is always say no and then i might let you in the group <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant well we'll put the link to that uh, that group on the uh, in the uh, show notes as well that is a, oh, a tricky you. question so that's gonna uh you don't like pineapple on your pizza then lauren right Right, yeah, no, so it's been a debate, and I tried to let it die, I really did, I, I tried to let it go, you know, we've been we've been going over this for like a year, so I stopped asking my, my interviews uh, about it, and the listeners wouldn't drop it, they kept sending me information, like they'd send me pictures of themselves eating it, or pictures of other people eating it, and I was yeah. like, okay, we're just going to keep rolling with this then, because everybody likes it, and it's fun, but you, you know, I, I still let people in if they do like pineapple and pizza, it's just been a fun joke that the listeners seem to like, so yeah. we keep going with it. It. it seems like a really easy one to get one of your five a day indiscreetly, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are your hopes for the future with the platform? Um, well, I guess uh, really if I think about the future of the platform, I just hope that it's still there in the future. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know, you know, social media is, uh, there There can be restricting things and we yeah. do talk about abortion and, and yeah. things of that nature. So I know that there's, there's always that sort of possibility in the background that, that they can say, hey, if you're going to talk about these things, you can't have this platform. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. it's still there and we're still able to do it. And, and I just hope to keep plugging away. And, and some weeks are harder than others. So I just really hope that I can keep it going. Yeah, uh, awesome. You mentioned that you've got a nearly 10-year-old. How do you balance being a mum and running an online platform and all of the other things that you do at the same time? Oh, uh, sleep deprivation. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I, I really, uh, I make sure that if 
if there's going to be a sacrifice of, of somebody for anything other than my, my family, that the sacrifice comes from me instead of them. So I'm homeschooling. I can't take away from the time for my homeschooling. If I'm going to, if I'm going to be doing something like editing or recording, I try to make sure I do that early in the morning or late at night and, um, organize it around that schedule so that my husband and my daughter come first. Mm. So it does actually require less sleep, which is okay. Cause we don't really need that as human beings. But, <laughs> uh, I also have to be really strict with my time on social media because it can it can yeah. suck up the time of your day really quickly if you if you sit on there too long. So yeah. I'm I'm restricting things of, of that nature, time wasting. And the whole goal of, of podcasting was that I noticed that there was some time in my day that wasn't being spent wisely or for the glory of God. So I wanted to use that time better. And so I started this podcast. So it really takes a lot of time organization and then self-control because mm. you really you, you know you you feel sort of a bit of a guilt about if somebody has messaged you or they're trying to get a hold of you and you want to make sure that you're responding and you're interacting with your listeners but at the same time I have to make sure also that my family comes first so it's it's a balance it's really difficult and I'm definitely not perfect at it mm. but if somebody out there is perfect email me and let me know yeah <laughs> a big part of your channel while your interviews who was your first guest so I had to go back and look at this one up because I yeah. couldn't remember, but it was actually Michelle Leslie. Uh, she has a, a podcast now, Word Fitly Spoken, and she's a blogger. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, when I first got started podcasting, I, I wanted to interview all the blogs that I enjoyed because I wanted to give like a voice to their yeah. to their writing. And so, yeah, Michelle Leslie, and then I, I interviewed about four or five other bloggers. But yeah, she was right in the middle of the Beth Moore problem with uh, the letter that, that was put out towards Beth Moore yeah. and uh, she was getting kind of pummeled on Twitter by Beth Moore and Beth Moore's followers. So I, I had her on to discuss that. It was really fascinating. Yeah. Wow. Who have been some of your favorite guests so far, Lauren? Oh, that's like picking your favorite <laughs> kind of chocolate. You know, that's a tough one, but I think um, looking back over it, I think probably uh, Costi Hinn yeah. or uh, Greg from, uh, anchored north they were both hilarious and yeah. so just that effortless uh funniness from them they sort of carried the whole interview <laughs> because they were both so funny <laughs> so those would probably be my favorite i think um i i think immediately whenever I, I was listing these off and my daughter wanted to hear about it she was like ray comfort was your favorite right and i was like um no i almost quit whenever I had to interview him because I was so nervous. So I think I'd have to go with Costi Hinn or Greg, yeah. Yeah, so cool. Have you had the chance to meet any of your guests in person over the years? I haven't yet. I hope I hope I will one day. Hopefully I'll get to see some of these guys, especially I'd love to get to, to meet Susan Heck because I know she visits churches quite a bit. Yeah. But uh, so far I haven't gotten to meet anybody. I, I hope I get to one day. Well, if any of those guests are listening right now, then you can surprise Lauren, right, by just turning up at your door <laughs> one day with a big box of chocolates yes. and flowers. <laughs> but no, no, no pineapple on the pizza. <laughs> no pineapple pizza. I was going to say that. Just don't show up with pineapple on pizza. Yeah. Uh, I might not let you end <laughs> well yeah one of the things that i love about you lauren is you're brave enough to live stream video and i just love the mega list that you guys do talk us through what that looks like from your end because it looks so scary to do well thank you first of all it's really really encouraging um the live stream is actually really scary yeah. uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong so i think um when we when we first decided to do the live stream the mega list was just a blog originally, something that I wanted to put together every Friday so that I can give people stuff to do over the weekends in case they needed something to, to learn about. And yeah. so the uh, the live list sort of came about with the idea that we're all home, you know, we've been sort of locked down and people were getting discouraged. So maybe this is something that we could do to really give people a little bit of encouragement while they're home, something that they can interact with. Mm. But the uh, process to get to a live stream was really difficult. At first, we were just going live on like YouTube, which is fine. Um, Zoom will take you live straight through through their their own thing. You can go straight to YouTube or straight to Facebook. Yeah. But you can only do one or the other. And I really wanted to be able to go th to live through all of them. So I had to learn uh, how to use Restream, which is a program that that sends your live feed straight through to all of these different channels. And from there, I had to learn how to use OBS which is how I, I manage those different screens that I can click on and yeah. switch to like the squirrel and stuff like that. But <laughs> I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. So there's been a learning curve for me for sure. I've, I've definitely made a lot of mistakes <laughs> going live. 
<laughs> What's amazing about it, though, is not only a one way kind of, um, you know, publishing of your content, you're also actually responding to comments in real life as well. You, you've got like all of these, this instant feedback coming back and you. It's just so funny watching you. You just stop halfway through saying something and you start interacting with <laughs> with people. <laughs> then how? Well, to, if nobody, if people haven't seen your behind the scenes video that you published a couple of weeks ago, it is it is a must watch classic video to watch on YouTube because just talk us talk us through what your studio looks like, Lauren, for those that haven't seen that yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, my studio is a mess. Uh, it's definitely <laughs> sort of just a jumbled up uh, uh, area of things that I've put together. Really, really MacGyvering it. I think it's you know the green screen, of course, is actually just plastic sheets that I got from from Walmart for a couple of dollars, and my computer is sitting on my printer in some shoe boxes so that it's up where it needs to be <laughs> the height and. We got some like little little cheapo lights pointing at me, and I think the only thing in the room that's actually professional is my microphone. And my husband got me that as a gift for Mother's Day, but yeah. that's my my studio. I I learned the hard way that you you have to put stuff on the walls so that it doesn't bounce and echo back. So I've got just some art stuff all over the walls and some some blinds and stuff up. So it's it's pretty basic. And I was excited to do that background scene because I, I, I have people tell me all the time, well, you know, you're, what you're doing is so professional. Yeah. And I wanted to make sure people knew that that was not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just not it's not how any of this works uh, behind the scenes. <laughs> I'm wearing, you know, pajama pants and, <laughs> and this is really just thrown together to the best of my yeah. ability. Yeah. And anyone can do it. And that was the hope that I wanted to really show behind that was is if you want to do this, it's possible. And it's possible to do it without spending thousands of dollars because I don't know who has thousands of dollars. Yeah. But even if I did, I don't think I could pour it into, yeah. into a, a studio. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was so much fun. I'm going to put a link to that video in the description below as well. So make sure that you check out Lauren's uh, video on that. It's so, so good. Lauren, have you changed your theological position on anything over the years? Obviously, you've mentioned the the prosperity gospel, straight word of faith. Is there anything else that you've you, you've developed or changed your mind on? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think whenever I first got saved, I was so confused by so many different things that I, I remember actually somebody asking uh, asking us about um, if if we were predestined, if predestination was a mm. thing. And my response was, isn't that what Hitler taught? Like, that's a bad, that's a yeah. bad theology. You don't want to believe that. Yeah. And I, so I, I had no clue what I was talking about. <laughs> um, and predestination, of course, is, is biblical and it's in scripture. And so I've definitely had to learn about uh, pretty much everything. I, I remember being asked as well about like speaking in tongues and, and I didn't have any clue about that when I was a new believer. So um, I started out sort of a uh, Arminian type uh, continuationist and yeah. I'm now a, you know, fire breathing Calvinist cessationist. So yeah. a lot of things have changed as I as I went through scripture, but in the last couple of years, the uh, depth of, of what I'm studying is more along the lines of like what, you know, what God's attributes are and things of that nature. So I don't see a lot of theolo theological things changing nowadays. But at the beginning, it was a lot. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot. It was very, it was very difficult. Yeah, yeah. If you could turn back time, would you do anything differently? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Um, if I could turn back time to like the very beginning of, of uh, the platform and everything, I would. I would definitely schedule my time more wisely yeah. and use my days better to the glory of God. I think uh, that would be the first thing that I would want to switch just and, and not take myself so seriously because at the very beginning of all of this, I felt like I was failing no matter what I did. So there's yeah. that like mom guilt that we, we tend to talk about as, as moms that no matter what you do, you sort of go to bed at night feeling like you still didn't do enough. And yeah. so uh, maybe tell myself to give give myself a little bit of grace for that so that I didn't spend my days just in a nervous wreck trying to figure yeah. out how to balance whether or not I'm being a good mom and, and yeah. still you know giving God the glory for everything that I was doing but those two things better better scheduling my time and not being so hard on myself I think would probably be what I would change yeah so good Lauren what is your favorite book of the bible oh I love this question I love this question <laughs> Because I can actually answer it now, as before I was, uh, when I was a false convert, I would have only known, like, maybe uh, the Gospel of John. Yeah, but yeah. Um, Job, Job is actually my favorite wow. book of the Bible, and I randomly decided to uh, start reading that, that book whenever I first got saved. It was the first book that I did an in-depth uh, read-through, where I was actually taking three chapters a week and reading each each 
all three chapters every single day. Uh, something that I learned from John MacArthur that you uh, read through the same portion of scripture each day until you really intake it. Yeah. And I was uh, really just shocked by the book of Job from, from the beginning to the end. But the best part is where you get to, to where the chapters are, where God's speaking and, and he's like, you know, gird up your loins. Cause yeah. I'm going to ask you some questions now. And yeah. when I got to that point, I was like, Oh wow. Like this, this, just alone right here at this very point where you see God's sovereignty and you see just the grace and the mercy that he's having on Job and the love that he shows, even, even through the suffering that Job is going through, that God is there and he's speaking to Job and he's willing to correct Job. Whereas really what, what we all deserve is hell. We don't deserve to be corrected. We don't deserve to have God, you know, graciously correct our, our poor theology, but he does that for, for Job and Job's friends and, and doesn't even smite the wife. I mean, the wife of that book was, woof. Yeah. I mean, she didn't get smited either. So it's a, a lot of God's sovereignty and his grace, grace in that book. Yeah. Definitely makes it my favorite. Yeah, so good. We mentioned a few moments ago the, the Megalist, which is your, your program where you regularly recommend resources. Uh, what have been some of the most helpful resources for you to help you personally grow in your faith so far? Um, I think if I was to list just a few of them, because there's so many, yeah. that uh, gotquestions.org is, is a big one. Yeah. Um, monergism.org, too, is another website yeah. that's that's really helpful. Uh, the Grace to You app is fantastic, uh, yeah. the, the GTY app they have, where you can actually go through and search the scripture uh, that you're that you're maybe studying at any given time and you can find all of pastor macarthur's sermons Mm. on on all of those so that's been helpful and then the um the early church fathers and their writings and stuff all those things and monergism has a lot of this stuff it's all on pdf so it's free yeah you know it's it's so old that you can go through and you can read a lot of like the Puritans and the reformers and stuff Mm. for free. So having access to all of that, just at the fingertip, at your fingertips, I'm dyslexic. So reading is tough, but I can Mm. make my phone read to me. And, and so that's fantastic. So having that access to all those things and people who've already dealt with these questions that you can ask uh, and you can learn from those people. That's, that's just something that's kind of unique to our generation. Yeah, absolutely. That's so good. Um, Lauren, this has been so much fun. I can't believe that half an hour has gone already. Um, Before we wrap up this interview, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, absolutely. I just want to thank you, first of all, for everything that you're doing at Exposit the Word, because just along the lines of what I just said, we have access to all these sermons, but you guys are putting out sermons, old sermons that sound fantastic. So I'm really thankful for everything that you guys do and, and for the hard work that you put into it. And if I could just encourage your, your listeners to really take the, the time and take the energy that it takes to understand the the men that have come before us and all these guys that you are personally putting their sermons up, Martin Lloyd Jones and Mm -hmm. Spurgeon and, and all that stuff, go, go further back even and, and learn from the church history that we have these 2000 years, because you'll be blessed by that to see that all the struggles that we're dealing with right now, that they they've actually been dealt with before. So there's, there's a long lineage of of, uh, believers that have maybe been in, bad churches or bad theology and they came out of it and so you can walk through it with them like pilgrim's progress or uh, yeah. uh, david brainerd's journal is another one where you can sort of walk through uh disbelief and all those mm. frustrations so that would be the the last thought that i'd want to add so good lauren what's the best way for people to connect with you uh social media is a great way to connect if you're just wanting to see uh what we're posting and what's going on with the podcast if you want to reach me personally i usually recommend uh emailing me because i do try to avoid spending too much time on social media but my email is right there on my phone so it's a uh, biblical beginnings at outlook.com or tulips and honey podcast at outlook.com either one of those will go to the same place and and you can reach out to me if you have questions or you want to talk to me about pineapple pizza you can get <laughs> hold <of> there <laughs> fantastic well what we're going to do is we're going to group together all of your social media um links um the link to the video showing around your studio your youtube channel as well um lauren thank you so much for coming on i've really enjoyed speaking with you today thanks for having me brother it's been a complete honor i really appreciate it Thank you so much.